Today in Photo Kitchen, it's Capture One versus Adobe Lightroom Classic in a 2024 battle for raw supremacy. Hello and welcome to episode number 86 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking Capture One versus Adobe Lightroom Classic 2024 Battle Edition. Now, I want to start off this review with that I'm not actually reviewing either one of these applications in depth. I'm going to try to keep this short. In fact, this is the second time I've recorded this. I went 18 minutes. That was not short at all. So this is going to be very condensed. But I do want to compare these two applications and essentially give you a groundwork for those of you using either one of these applications. Has the company done enough on the other side of the fence, of the digital fence, to woo you over, right? Have they done enough? You know, where are these applications currently? And I have to give the 2024 battle an overall rating of meh. Uh, neither application is really blowing my socks off. I will say Capture One has done a lot more because Capture One had so much ground to catch up to the AI features found in Adobe Lightroom Classic. Adobe Lightroom Classic has really kind of delivered a uh, version of it. Now, by the way, both companies would tell you that the applications run better, they run faster, they're more robust, they crash less. And my answer to that is that's what they should do. I don't give you an award for doing what you should have done eight versions of Go, right? Lightroom should just be faster than it is right now, even though that it is faster than a previous version. So. You don't get any kudo points of that. We're looking at like big ticket items here and I'm not gonna hit the minutia. Yeah, there's eye snap tracking and focus inside of Capture One. Great, I'm sure I'm gonna use it, but eh. Inside of Lightroom Classic, they really haven't delivered much. The biggest feature that I have found, especially that everybody's talking about is point color inside the develop module here, which allows you to selectively uh, get a color and then only exclusively work on just that color. So you're not doing the pinks, you're doing maybe the pinks in this particular hat. And honestly, it's okay. Capture One has had something in Color Editor for years. In fact, Capture One allows you to make a color selection and then make a mask on that, which is great for skin retouching and kind of evening out. Like if somebody has a lot of red in their face, it's great for evening out those tones. Look it up on YouTube. They're fan it's fantastic. So even the one thing that Lightroom Classic has done that everybody's talking about is not better than what Capture One was doing four years. So let's get into what has changed. First of all, let's just say that Lightroom Classic has not done much. And what they should have done, they haven't done at all. The two big items for me that Lightroom Classic's been lagging on that I've been complaining about for I don't know, the last five or six versions is the abysmal export feature, which is essentially the same export window as the previous three or four versions. And really the features of what it does has been the same almost since its inception. There's no way to leverage metadata in here. There's no way to make multiple folders and all this other kind of stuff easily without having to click on a bunch of different things. The leveraging of metadata and the export functions found inside of Capture One are superior. I've done videos on this. I'm gonna do some more videos on them. Uh, because I don't think people really leverage it enough. But nevertheless, Lightroom Classic hasn't done that. The other thing that Lightroom Classic hasn't done that's really, it's almost insulting at this point, is tether capture is absolutely terrible. I shoot Sony, second most popular camera brand in the world, or most popular, depending on what quarter of sales you're looking at, and I still cannot connect my camera to Lightroom Classic. I don't know what's going on with Adobe and Sony, but this is unacceptable. So it, it's... I don't know what's going on with Lightroom Cloud. Those are things that they could do easily. I mean, this is the monster of Adobe. Why haven't they done these? If Adobe did this, if somebody from Adobe is listening to this, you could very well just have the perfect raw editing program if you just made this more suited to professionals with those two features. Now, Capture One had to jump into the AI game and they've done that. I have an image selected here. I'll come into layers and mask. I'll hit subject and it will, because I've done this countless times now, it will select my two subjects here. Well, my three subjects, the couple and their lovely dog. Uh, and it does a really good job of this. I didn't think that Capture One would do as good of a job in its first dipping its toe in the 
the water of AI selections, but they have done a very good job here. They have an AI selection brush that allows you to add to the masking here and you could further add to the AI mask and it's very nice and I have green as my masking color in most programs, but it does a very good job. Now, it doesn't do as good of a job as Adobe Lightroom Classic. Adobe Lightroom Classic still rules the roost on this. If I show you that I have three images selected here of the same subject in slightly different poses, um, and I go into the develop module and I have one of these images selected, and let's say, well, I wanna brighten up my subject. I'll hit the subject button here. It takes a second because I have multiple images, but it goes ahead and selects that. I'll go into exposure here. I'll just lift the exposure heavy so you could see this. I'll do another mask. Let's select the sky. Again, it's a little bit of time depending on your processor speed here. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm going to really saturate that sky. And now if I go to my other images inside of this application and I come over say to the second one, you'll see that I have the subject and the sky all taken care of in the masks. It's automatically happened. Capture One just doesn't do this feature well. It doesn't do auto sync anything. I've done a video on this. I don't know why Capture One doesn't think that this is a big deal, but it certainly is. And it doesn't apply to masking either. If I uh, find another image here, let's scroll down here, and I have this image and I decide, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's go ahead and lose the mask I've already created. And I select this subject, right? Now I can't have two images selected because Capture One doesn't do that. So it's okay, select the image. Let's just go ahead and make a change. By the way, the brightness slider in Capture One is amazing. I wish Adobe had that because uh, I'm not clipping anything when I do that. So now if I come in and select the second image here and then do copy and apply holding down the shift key, it should copy everything over. And what it actually does is it does copy everything over, but it doesn't reselect. It doesn't say, oh, you made a subject selection. Let's redo the mask here. So if you wanted to do this, you got to dump this mask. You got to remake the selection. You got to apply the same settings. This is time consuming. And so Lightroom Classic is still far better at this. Another thing that Lightroom Classic is far better at is the combination of masks. Another thing that Capture One doesn't do, and now with AI, it needs to finally do this inside of layers. We'll see what I mean in a second, but I just wanna show you what I mean here. I've brightened up my subject here, but the foreground or the area of this dock is not brighter. If I was lighting, if I was doing a reflector, all of these things would have the same luminosity. There'd be a falling off here. So I'm just gonna add to this, by adding a linear gradient. And I'm just gonna come in and I will just add this as I go through. Of course, it wouldn't do the water um, so much. And I, of course, can make a mask of that as well. But because I have done this, I could come into my library module here and then see that it's added the masks on everything, including the mask of the subject in a completely different pose. Let's go into develop module and you could see in the masking here that I have all of my masking done. Uh, auto sync, auto masking, adding to masks, Lightroom Classic has all of that. The If I go back to the picture of the lovely couple here and let's say that I brighten them up, and again, significantly, just so it's easier to see on the video. Uh, if I grab the linear gradient tool, let's go up and actually grab it. I could do it actually from the layers and masks panel here, and then try to draw a mask so I would have that luminance. See how it immediately gets rid of the AI selection here? There's not an easy way to do this. And by the way, this isn't an AI thing. I can't have two linear masks. I can't have a linear and a radial. There's a lot of limitations with combining masks inside of Capture One, which is weird because they give you layers. Why don't they give you multiple masks on layers? They need to give you that. So that's a real hindrance. So um, that is where we kind of stand in 2020. 24, these big differences. Now, if I had to give a grade to Capture One, I'm going to give it a B minus. The addition of AI is great. And if you had never used Adobe Lightroom Classic and you had never seen this video and seen how easy it is to work with masks, you would probably be like, oh, the AI masking inside of Capture One's phenomenal. And they have done a good job. I don't want to completely, uh, you know, belittle Capture One and make them think, oh yeah, you, you know, th this is not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. They've done a good job on it. The problem is, is Adobe Lightroom just has done a better job. Now, Adobe Lightroom Classic, it, it kind of gets a D here. Why? Well, because everything that they did that was awesome happened a, a version or two ago with AI masking, right? It, it's already happened. Adobe has taken developing kind of as where they need to. There's a few things they need to do. They need to have every development feature that's inside the develop module happen to a mask. That just needs to just, just be commonplace. Have it happen like Capture One. Um, 
But overall, they've moved the the marker so far that it's kind of hard for them to do that. But the workflow things, the lack of tether support, the lot of lack of export feature, all of those things that are found in Capture One, that's a huge mistake in my opinion. So D to Adobe, B to Capture One. If you're using either one of these applications, has either application done enough to woo you over? No, I don't think so. I really don't. I think if you're happy with Lightroom, continue. If you're happy with Capture One, continue. If you're just getting into the raw game, you're on the fence about it. To me, Adobe Lightroom Classic is if you had to do family portraiture, wedding photography, anything where you're doing multiple subjects like this and you need to do batch editing and you need to do it fast, even though the tether support and export is not great, it doesn't exist really well for Sony and export is not great all the way around, this is still a huge time saving factor. If you're a professional photographer, uh, as far as doing like more corporate work, you're not doing as much retouching, you're handing stuff off, you need tether support, capture ones there, the export function's fine. So nothing's really changed. The people who flock to capture one for its features, you're gonna stay there, you get AI, great. Those of you that are using Adobe Lightroom Classic, start lighting, writing letters and get some tether support for us, would you please? Um, so there you go. Hopefully that was short and sweet enough. Hopefully you liked this video. If so, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Please share this with other friends and family members or anybody else in your circle that maybe is into photography or photo retouching. Uh, and until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen. Thank you.